Hello, I'm Olivia Moore, and I'm the person that is creating the video summary this week. So first off, in the reading by Mitchell, Almy, and Howard Winnett, they explain how in 1982 to 83-ish, there was a legal case where Susie Phipps tried to sue, the Lu sue Louisiana of Vital Records. She then tried to change her legal birth certificate to say that she was not black. However, she ended up losing this case because it was said that if you had won 30 seconds of African-American blood, then you were automatically considered black. On the other hand, during the whole case trial, Attorney General Ross Davis said how this was unconstitutionally and said that everyone, even the whites, had at least 1 20th of African-American blood, which very much could have been confirmed, but in the end, this was ruled out and he ended up losing the case. Overall, this case helped us see the issue of defining race and establishing meaning in the institutional life. Furthermore, one sentence that I find very important in the racial formations reading is, scientific interpretations of race have not been alone in sparking heated controversy. Religious perspectives have done so as well. I believe this statement is one of the most important topics we need to take into consideration when discussing people's views on racism. For instance, there are many reasons in the Bible that some people interpret that justify slavery. In addition to that, Europe Europeans also were curious at the fact that the natives were even human souls. And so they always looked at religion to explain why these people had a denial of civil rights and even just got their properties taken away from them. Furthermore, from the scientific perspective of things, Many scientists in the earlier centuries try to believe that race was a biological concept. For example, Dr. Samuel Morton studied the cranial capacity of all types of races and explained how races were different or how some, more specifically the whites, were better than others. Additionally, to this day, studies continue on this. However, scientists study more the different types of genetics and other factors. Um, moreover, the race has also had another approach for why it is the way it is and that it is a social concept. This is from all the social relations and historical concepts in which race is embedded on. A prime example of this is assigning racial identity in the United States, such as an individual who is black trying to attempt to pass for being white so that they could probably receive a higher social status. Additionally, another statement that the reading says that also stuck out to me is we use the term racial formation to refer to the process by which social, economic, and political forces determine the con content and importance of racial categories. I believe this is a crucial fit phrase in the reading because it shows how it isn't just one thing that affects how we view or discriminate against races, but it's actually a multitude of different factors. Also, the reading also mentions how racial etiquette exists. This basically just includes a set of interpreted codes and racial meanings in which we operate in the interactions of our daily lives. This can include things like people's skin color and even like the look of them and their athletic performance. Furthermore, all of this begins to just be common sense in our daily lives on how we view each other. Moving forward, things such as film and television have also formed how we view races today. An example is how certain TV shows had more different types of races to normalize them in like today's cultural society. Last but not least, the term racialization also comes up in the reading. This term is used to signify the extension of racial meaning to previously racial unclassified relationship, social practice, or group. One example is what the category white was when the United States first started to develop. It's like so many immigrants such as like Jews, Irish, and like other Europeans came to the land. So creating the norm for whites took some time. Um, lastly, Mitchell and Howard showed the readers how race could include so many things such as it being as simple as our skin color all the way up to things such as social stratification. Without a doubt, I believe that it is crucial to break some of our bad habits or thoughts so that we can see that all of us are equal no matter what we look like, which could lead us to living in a happier world. Thank you.